We're seeing Zoom, uh, Zoom higher, workday under pressure. And it's an interesting setup for Salesforce, which reports on Wednesday. Tech generally continues to dominate the tape. Let's bring in Jack Janisiewicz, Portfolio Manager and Lead Portfolio Strategist at Natixis Investment Management. Uh, thank you so much for joining us, Jack. There's macro and then there's tech. And that seems to be what's driving the tape these days, right? Even if you're an economist, I see my economist notes are mentioned. NVIDIA's quarterly results. Yeah, and I think you had every reason to uh, sell off over the last week and a half or so, right? CPI a little bit hotter than expected, PPI a little harder than expected, retail sales maybe weaker, and then everybody was sort of in the let's buy the rumor, sell the fact on the uh, on the, in, the Nvidia earnings. And guess what? You know, here we are up 15 percent off of the uh, you know the, the pre uh, the pre earnings announcement. So uh, I think there's uh, that tells us a little bit of something here that the market's still uh, in pretty good shape. In pretty good shape, but we do have a read of inflation on Thursday, which is the Fed's preferred measure of inflation. Of course, the markets did care about inflation for that one day that the consumer price index came in hotter than expected. As you think about that tension between, you know, NVIDIA we trust or does inflation matter and the rate cuts uh, outlook matter, how are you thinking about how much stock to put in that inflation read this Thursday? And that's where I think the focus is going to be, right? It's it's going to come back to PCE. You know, we had a little bit of that uptick in CPI. We've been talking for quite some time that there's probably going to be a wedge that does emerge between CPI and PCE. A lot of that has to do with the weightings within the shelter component of the, both of those uh, inflation metrics. But keep in mind, the Fed pays attention to PCE, and that's the one that's going to matter more here. And CPI is going to look more sticky than, C, uh, than PCE. But we'll find out at the end of this week whether that uh, that trend or that anomaly, that little blip we had in CPI, uh, was in fact a blip and PCE continues to head towards the 2% target. There's three things that people who are skeptical about the, mar the market rally will complain about. I I'd like to go through some of those points. And just to get your take, one is market breadth. You hear this all the time. Um, the equal weight version of the S&P is lagging materially. The... Um, the market weight, which which shows the heft and strength of the big tech companies. Is that a harbinger you think of, of negative things to come or is it an opportunity to pick up those names that haven't participated in the rally? You know, I think from a market breadth perspective, it's not surprising that the market does move forward. You know, when you look historically speaking, you know, it's a handful of names that do propel the markets higher. And that's uh, historically speaking, that's what happens. So this idea that you have a handful of names pushing us higher is a bad thing, i.e. breath is more narrow, that's probably not a good thing. I'm a little bit suspect with that. I think you need to get a little bit more clarity on the rate backdrop, the inflation backdrop. When you get clarity on that front, that, that's when I think you're going to start to see that breath widen out. Equally weighted stocks will start to outperform here, or at least play catch up in here. But I think it's that clarity. The, the investors want to have that confidence that you, you know we can start to branch out a little bit more and not just play in maybe that big cap tech, more defensive quality growth trade in here. The other complaint is they'll look at the Russell as an indicator and that we're not getting um, sustained indication kind of either way. Uh, we're still, you know, as the S&P has hit new highs, the, the Russell is still off, you know, nearly 17 percent from all time highs. And again, same story there. I think for the Russell to really start to work in here, it's a function of growth and it's a function of rates. I think we still certainly expect to see growth come in better than expected. But I think the market also needs to see that rate cuts will be commencing. And we've had a little bit of a repricing more recently on that backdrop, you know, with the market pricing out two and maybe two and a half cuts here. Um, I think the market needs to get a little more comfortable with that rate backdrop. And when it finally does, it starts to think that the Fed is now in, in rate cutting mode. I think that's the turning point where you start to see the Russell 2000 start to pick back up again. The third and final one is uh, there's about 140 stocks in the regional banking ETF. Only um, six of them are higher for the year that the regional banks are facing issues. And as we push out rate cut expectations and bond mm -hmm. yields continue to move higher, that they are in a more precarious position. And I think that's probably fair. You know, I think that rate cut backdrop would certainly help the regional banks backdrop. 
Um, you know, I think you've got some regulatory issues that are still overhanging. A lot of that is a result of what's happened at the beginning of last year um, with regard to maybe SVB and some of the potential changes that will start to come into uh, the banking system on the back of that. And there's still, I think, a little bit of an overhang with regard to commercial real estate that might be acting as a headwind. So, again, that clarity versus uh, murkiness might be a little bit more so with regard to uh, regional banks, and that might be a little bit of a cloud overhanging that sector of the market.